Hi, in this video I'm going to be uh, talking about how Atlantis was destroyed and how we can use another source of the Atlantis myth, namely the source from Diodorus Siculus's The Library of History, in order to gain a better understanding of how Atlantis could have been destroyed. Again, a central theme of my YouTube channel is the importance of another source of Atlantis that has traditionally been ignored by by both Atlantis researchers and skeptics. It's been seen, it's really, it's a commonly uh, held misconception, and I made another video of this, that Plato is the only independent primary source of Atlantis, and that every other source that talks about Atlantis is actually referencing Plato or citing Plato. And I showed why that this, uh, this is a misconception and that this claim is false. There may not be a huge number of additional independent primary sources in addition to Plato, but there is at least one. And that one source is actually very, very important because it's different from Plato's account of Atlantis in so many subtle yet significant ways. And this source, as I mentioned in another video, is... The Library of History, written by a man named Diodorus Siculus, who lived around 300 years after Plato. And because he lived 300 years after Plato, it's been seen as really a, a source that's either been fabricated or, that's been, or that was originally um, inspired by reading Plato. But I show you, I, I argue in my other video that this cannot be true because of the degree of difference between the claims. And so Diodorus' account is summary that one of the most important pieces of that of that dialogue is the following. To the left is Plato's account of the destruction of Atlantis. There occurred violent earthquakes in a single this part we could skip because this is actually talking about this destruction of Athens, because remember the story of Play the story of Plato's Atlantis is not just a story about Atlantis, it's about Atlantis and two other civilizations, an ancient Athens and an ancient Egypt. But we can skip that for now because we are focusing on Atlantis. So there occurred violent earthquakes, and then the island of Atlantis in like manner disappeared in the depths of the sea. But it doesn't really say how it disappeared. We have an earthquake, and then Atlantis disappears. Well, what's the intermediate causation that links those two events? We don't really know. But Diodorus' account says the following. This is the story that's saying how the Marsh Tritonis disappeared from sight in the course of an earthquake. When those parts of which, which lay towards Oceanos, Oceanos were torn asunder. Now, they, this marsh Tritonus also disappeared from the site in the course of an earthquake, but it actually tells you exactly what caused it to disappear as a result of the earthquake. The parts of it which lay towards Oceanos were torn asunder. Now, that's a very, very specific claim, right? That's a very, very specific description. It might not immediately tell us the answer as to what precise geological process actually caused the disappearance of Atlantis, but that's a lot more information we have to go on than in the left, where, where it just says it disappeared and it doesn't really say how. There's no linking causative event. But of course there's one problem. Here we're talking about Atlantis explicitly. Here we are talking about the Marsh Tritonis. What is the Marsh Tritonis and what does it have anything to do with Atlantis? Because if we're going to say that this information about the disappearance of the Marsh Tritonis has actual relevance to what ha happened to Atlantis, there has to be some connection between Tritonis and Atlantis. It ends the, the last two letters of both of those both of those names are the same, but they cannot just be assumed to be the same, and that's very much the case. So in the following slides, I'm going to be talking about why we can be relatively sure that Tritonis and Atlantis are referring to the same event, or say same place. Now, just to introduce to you um, 
Tritonus. What is this Tritonus that, that I am so, um, so kind of obsessed about? Why is it important? And here to the left is Plato's description of Atlantis to compare with. This power came forth out of the Atlantic Ocean. There was an island in front of the Straits. This island was larger than Libya or Asia combined. There was an opposite continent that you could pass to. And there was a true sea and a boundless continent. Atlantis had a wonderful empire which ruled over that continent. Okay. That's a lot of information, but we can kind of get a sense of the, the magnitude of Atlantis. and That's a large island and that there are other islands and that there's this continent to the west. And let's let's kind of skim over Diodorus Siculus's library of history in an important passage which, which describes what tr Tritonus is and where it is. This is referring to the Amazons, actually. This is referring to a tribe of, of female warriors who supposedly got into a war with the Atlanteans and actually ultimately defeated the Atlanteans and then entered into an alliance with them. And and so there, the Amazonians lived in this land. They lived on an island which, because it was in the west, was called Hespera. And it lay in the marsh Tritonus. So Tritonus is a marsh that is, inside, that is on an island named Hespera. The marsh was near Okeanos, the ocean, or the Atlantic Ocean. And this is not that important right here. There's a certain river that drains into it. The river makes it a marsh, presumably. And that this island above was of great size and of fruit bearing trees and every kind from which the natives secure their food. So it's kind of similar. It's a very, very large island. There's a marsh on that island. And we can kind of think about it like this here. The, 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 the name of the people who lived on the island was Atlantis. But but the idea is that this island called Hespera is so similar to Atlantis in so many ways because it's a large island, it's in the Atlantic Ocean, it has island, it has fruit-bearing trees of every kind which Atlantis is, is described as having and it's it's an island of great size. How many islands of great size are there in the Atlantic Ocean? It was larger than Libya and Asia put together, island of of great size right here. And so we have an account that's very, very similar. And the idea is that, <clears throat> that the island of Atlantis could have different names. One, one group of people might call it this name and another group of people might call it this name. And the name could be in reference to that place's general geography, Hespera, or the specific people who inhabit it which could be the Atlanteans. But from the perspective of the, of the people who aren't Atlanteans that inhabit it, maybe they would not rather call the name of that island according to the name of a particular people who lived there, but a general name as to a referencing its geography. But that's really besides the point. What the important point here is just kind of Describing on a on a really a, a big picture level what this island Hespera is and the fact that there's a Mars Tritonus in that island. And why is this relevant? Because the Amazonians, we, we are told that they began to expand from their native land of his Hespera and the Tritonus. And right as they began to expand from their from their original original lands, the first people against whom they advanced, according to the tale, were the Atlanteans, the most civilized men among the inhabitants of those regions who dwelt in a prosperous country and possessed great cities. So we know that the Atlanteans here are probably and almost certainly referring to the same Atlanteans who, who are mentioned in Plato. And so, because the Amazonians, <clears throat> as the, because the Amazonians advanced against the Atlanteans, <clears throat> sorry, uh, because the Amazonians advanced against the Atlanteans, among the first of the people whom they advanced, we know that the Atlanteans must also be very close to the Mars Tritonus. 
And, and by extension, we can almost conclude that the Atlanteans and the Amazonians actually shared that same area, shared that same marsh, and shared that same island of Hespera. But that the I so that the the island on which the Atlanteans dwelt could have been called Atlantis, but because the Atlanteans and the Amazonians were living so close together on a marsh or close to a marsh named Hespera, which was on an island that was named Hespera, we can kind of conclude that that the Atlanteans were also living in the marsh in the marsh Tritonis or very close to it, and also on the island of Hespera. And so the fact that the Diodorus of uh, Diodorus Siculus's account is describing the Marsh Tritonis as having disappeared from the from sight in the course of an earthquake. As a result of this, this caused when the parts which lay towards Oceanus were torn asunder, we can infer that the disappearance of that Marsh Tritonis must have affected the Atlanteans as well. Because in the previous passage, in the previous slide, it was described how the Tritonus Marsh was actually very, very close to where the Atlanteans were living because they were among the first people whom the Amazonians who lived in the Marsh Tritonus began to advance. So, so the Atlanteans couldn't have been living so very far away. And the fact that the Atlanteans were described as having disappeared in the course of an earthquake that implies that this marsh, this that 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 this destruction is actually describing the destruction of not just the Amazonians who are living on the Mar marsh Tritonis explicitly stated, but also the destruction of the Atlanteans too, who were living close enough for that disaster to have affected. So the conclusion that we can reach from reading these passages together is that Atlantis was destroyed, that Atlantis was destroyed because the parts of which lay toward Okeanos were torn asunder as the result of an earthquake. What does that mean, though? What does that exactly mean? That gives us additional information as to what could happen, but it doesn't give us a clear picture of exactly what happened to Atlantis to make it disappear beneath the sea. And in future videos, I will talk about this, exactly what this torn asunder means and, and, the, and how we can place this, um, how we can, um, what part of the world there may be in which a part which lay close to Oceanos was actually torn asunder.